What's up, everybody? Back in business for the weekly challenge, and let's get our slate clean. We're uh, right around average at this point after the first three boards. We have three fresh boards here, and we are jumping into an auction that is ready to roll for us. A diamond on our left, pass a heart. What would you do, folks? Make your choice before I make it. Take your time if you need to. Pause if you need to. So this is a difficult spot for most advancing players. You have a really good hand. In fact, you know you have the best hand at the table because, in fact, I'm, I'm in a best hand tournament right now. So this is the best hand at the table, guaranteed. What did you bid? It's a pass, folks. Why is it a pass? Because there is no description of this hand that makes sense, right? Uh, some of you might have thought of double. And double would be perfect if you had spades and clubs, not diamonds, right? They've actually opened diamonds. So if you're doubling here, you're showing the unbid suits. You can't overcall anything. You don't have five spades, which is what you need to overcall in any suit. Minor or major, when you're in the overcall position, meaning the opponents have bid first, you're entering the auction with a new suit bid, five or more at the one level. Uh, at the two level, it's five or more also, but usually six or more, right? So we want to be disciplined with this. We don't have a hand that we can actually bid. So it's okay to pass with the best hand. It does not mean the auction's over for you. You may have a chance to bid later, and you can make your choice then. But also you're you're not revealing any information to the opponent so if it is in fact their hand you've disguised the location of most of the cards in these situations so so do not stretch to bid when you do not have a bid that's going to properly describe your hand so you're going to pass and now they're going to get all the way up to the three club level we're still happy to stay the heck out of this auction and now they've hopped up to four hearts and you have a lot of possible tricks in your hand but unfortunately, you're on opening lead, and you have possibly the worst choice of all time. <laughs> you see that your left-hand opponent not only bid, but they rebid diamonds, right? So I, I, I know this player is short in diamonds. And if they're void in diamonds, I certainly can't be leading this ace of diamonds. They've also bid clubs, right? And I have queen doubleton. They're in hearts. I have King Doubleton of that suit. My goodness, what the heck am I supposed to lead on this one? Uh, this suit is usually a terrible choice of lead because we're never going to lead away from an ace in a suit contract, meaning we're never going to lead the 10, the 9, or the 6. But also, plunking down the ace of spades is usually just a bad play also. And if you think about, hey, maybe we should cash that ace of diamonds if righty is short, well... What if lefty just says king, queen, sixth of diamonds, right? Now you've set up two tricks in dummy. And if even if they're not roughing, right, the two tricks in dummy are going to be able to throw away cards in their hand. Um, God, this is so brutal. I'm going to leave the ace of spades, folks. And, I, and the reason I'm coming to this is the, the rest of the choices look awful. And also, I think we might be in a hurry to get spades because, as I said, even if righty does have only one diamond, eventually they can lead towards the dummy and diamonds and just create tricks that way. So I, I think at some point I'm just going to be forced to plunk down the ace of spades anyway. And here I'm not distraught when I see king doubled in a dummy. Right? I'm actually, and I love that I see king queen six, the diamonds and dummy, because it means I didn't blow up that suit already. So here, um, I, there's no, the, the thing you're worried about because you haven't let a diamond yet is if, if this player does have one diamond, right, they, they, can they get rid of it? And the answer is, well, what are they going to pitch it on from this hand? Nah, nothing, right? There's nothing they're going to be able to pitch it on here. So here we don't necessarily have to worry about it going away if they have it. The only thing I am worried about is if partner's void, right? Uh, it's unlikely. And yeah, great. Declares void. We love this now too because a lot of people are maybe banging down the ace of diamonds and getting it rough to trick one. We've avoided that meltdown. And now let's see what they're going to do. They're going to pitch a club. Oh, that maybe not. Is that a good sign? That's a bad sign. Have we set up their. Uh... I mean, we had sing we had doubleton queen anyway. I hope we didn't just set up an opportunity for them to hook themselves up, but I guess we'll find out. So here I'm going to play king of hearts and I'm going to play a heart just to draw more trump right i want to get a couple more rounds off there and here i can pitch the jack of diamonds knowing that they can only lead a diamond from that hand and well not well done mr robot uh 46.4 percent we're struggling here what's going on with this one i guess we could do better if we i mean if we let a club it would have been better actually because we would have created a club trick 
and still not have kind of hooked up, hooked up uh, the opponent in diamonds and in spades, right? So a club lead is absolutely the best. Man, that's a tough lead. And there it is. The, these are the two people that like clubs. Or they led the ace of diamonds and switched to a club. Wow, they led the ace of diamonds and they still got it. Ah, uh, yeah, because they, yeah, now now they don't have the time to pitch the club on the spade. Uh, and, I don't know, I don't know. They, they took they took ten tricks and two tables. The rest of us just minus six fifty, and then one person minus six eighty. Uh, that's what happens when the robots do well, right? You're you're gonna see when the robots have hands, right? You're gonna see this score quite often, right? Very average results because it's the same two players at every table doing the same thing, you know. So sometimes just a little bit of a different bid, maybe, or a different line of play can produce uh, a trick or two uh, on each side of these things. So. We will keep plotting forward. We have, that looks like a no trump opener, right? Is that uh, 17 right on the dot? No, it's 16, sorry. Uh, all right, so we're in for one no trump, two spades. So this is a weird one, folks. My, the expert standard way to play two spades, just if for your information, is to play it as either clubs or an invitational hand, but the robot I think just plays this as minor suit statement, which is super weird. Um, uh, which basically just asks about your minor suit holdings. Do you have a minor? And also, you know, what if you don't, you would just be bidding two no trump. And if you do, you show it here. I'm kind of balanced, but I don't hate my hand as far as shape. And especially my minor suit holdings are quite chunky. Uh, partner has shortness in spades. And this is a good spot here, folks. When your partner transfers to a minor, or in this case, does some sort of minor suit statement, whatever. But then you see a major suit bid. That's always shortness, right? So this is, hey, partner, I'm short in spades. So you know. And we don't mind that, right? Because we actually have a very nice spade holding for stopper purposes. So we can now say we can bid three no trump. Does it mean it's going to end there? Not necessarily. Uh, but what we're saying is even with that spade shortness, we're comfortable playing three no trump. We've advertised this shortness to our opponents, unfortunately. But that's you know that's why we have such a good holding here to to uh, to make sure that we're not going to get lit up in that suit. All right, let's dance. So I'm going to pop the ten in here just in case they led fourth best from Queen Jack fourth. Uh, we know the robot doesn't lead fourth best too often, but oh, we might as well take advantage of it when they do. Nice. All right. So finally they made a good lead, and you know what? The robot's probably never going to make a good lead again. They're like, oh, I got bit on this one. I'm just going to lead third best now. Or my singleton honors <laughs> like they, they are want to do. All right, here we go. Clubs, clubs. We're going to see if this breaks evenly. Yes. Ooh, it's going to be an embarrassment of riches on this one, folks. So now we're, we're watching diamonds right now. We're, we're looking for them to pitch diamonds. We might even shake a diamond from our hand. I don't think we're going to. Um, I, I don't necessarily need to get them to throw something away, especially if we're going to see a 10 here or a jack. We're not. Uh, no bidding. What did Lefty lead? They had four hearts. So I guess this is possibly where it would go wrong. There we go. Uh, I was just seeing if, if it was breaking badly, who's probably more likely to have it? Not paying attention too closely. I just went that way. It didn't matter. They broke evenly. And we'll scoop up 78.6. Nice. Finally, a little bit of a little bit of an above average score. Where does that put us? Wow. We hop up to third place. Amazing. All right. We passed quite a few people on that one. And that is because... We ended up getting just a tied for top score for getting those 12 rippers in. And I think that's just that first play, folks. Pop in that 10 of hearts and prepare for success. Is it? Does it matter to you if they cover with the jack? No, right? You, you weren't taking that 10 of hearts anyway. But when they've led normally from fourth best leads, there's your chance for an extra trick. Don't miss it. All right. Back to business. Third chance. Last chance to excel for today. Board number six. Ooh, what is that? 13? This is so some people try to deke the robots with one club here. Um, I I have found that to be bad. All right, some people bid their shortest minor to a, to kind of like steer them away from a no trump lead. I've never seen that go well for me, so I just don't like it. <laughs> uh, here, thirteen partner, yeah, whatever. Uh, the only thing I'm thinking here because it's the best hand tournament. If I had like a balanced eleven or twelve, and I decided to open, I might pass one spade sometimes, but definitely not here. Partner has a lot of hands we could make game. But when they float two spades, yeah, sure. I wish I pa I wish I pass now. <laughs> All right, uh, perfect. Partner has just a normal hand. We're gonna we're gonna maybe 
or we hope, make this uh, hand up in the play. Uh, ten of clubs lead, you would expect this to either be shortness or like 10-9 something something, right? Uh, which means to our left is ace, jack, whatever, right? So the question is, what do we play? Um, I don't think, I mean, we could play low and see if they play the ace. Uh, it seems super unlikely that they would do that. And now what, what do you think we should play, folks? Make your Make your choice. So I, I don't mind uh, setting up trumping in one or both of these hands. Um, I'm gonna lead a diamond towards the dummy and see what we can get here. So, so this is a is a nice play. Now, if they if they decide to clear some clubs, we'll let them do that. And if not, we kind of just have a way to maybe not draw trump and take some extra tricks, All right? Uh, I I'm gonna lead hard now, right? I just I'm I'm doing this because my communication may or may not get disrupted. They might get a little heart rough here. Possibly, but if hearts break evenly, that's not happening either. All right, and if they're not breaking evenly, we get to trump that as well. And wow, I think we got a little lucky on that one, but uh, I, I think if we draw trump earlier, we're probably, we might just do okay as well, but uh, Diamonds was something I certainly wanted to explore first just to kind of slide in a trick there and also get get that rough set up. And also if they switch to clubs, we can get rough rough and then and then draw some trumpet here. This ended up being a little easier to play because they roughed with their queen third, right? So it's a it's a card we don't have to guess. Um people made three for sure. I'm I, I just you know, I felt like I could have played that better the entirety of the time. <laughs> so so we'll take 67.9. Not the best session. Like sometimes it's important. Uh, we talked about this this weekend. I was at a great event in Arizona for uh, advancing players. Super cool uh, at uh, at a place called Bridge on Shea. So if you're watching from uh, Arizona, what's up, people? You you had a great time this weekend, and and I can't wait to see you again over there. Um, you're you're gonna feel bad about bridge, and you're gonna feel bad about your bridge like all the time. Right? It's 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 just going to happen as I smack into my table here. Uh, you you uh, you. Your confidence level will go like a roller coaster in this game, right? And, and it'll just, you have to kind of give yourself a break in a lot of spots, right? You're, you're going to be down on yourself. You're going to think you could play better. You're, you're hopeless. You can't, you're not getting any good results. And it, it can snowball to a point where you start believing it, right? So just shake it off. The best thing you can do as a bridge player is have a short memory. So I'm going to forget about the way I played this hand in such a chaotic way and be lucky that we get 67.9. And I'm going to live to fight another day, which is board seven tomorrow. And here's what we're starting with right here. This uh, this looks like it'll be, well, do you uh, whatever. Make your choice of this one and join me tomorrow to see what we do with the same. We might have a little fun with it. All right, folks, I will see you uh, either right here or at the tables and have a great time. Back at you tomorrow.